Oh, hello. <laughs> All right, anyways, before we get into this, I had a couple stories I want to tell. First, <coughs> it's just a little random story about what happened today when I got home from work. So, <coughs> I set up all this stuff all around my apartment. I call them like, I call them traps. They're not traps, they're just deterrents, I guess. I put up a door for my be my bedroom. My bedroom didn't have a door before. I put a door up. And I usually keep something on my um, rocking chair as a deterrent. I keep a part of a little fence on my couch. All this crap, it's annoying, and it's all to deter my cat from being on the furniture and stuff. The reason for that is because she's she has a history of uh, urinating on this stuff. She's peed on my couch three times and my rocking chair twice. Plus, she has a habit of finding the most random hidden areas to vomit, and you don't find it until who knows how much longer when you just happen to randomly run into it. So I set all this crap up to try to prevent her from ruining stuff I don't want to ruin, like my bed when I'm not home or whatever. So anyway, when I got home today, I didn't see it right away, but afterwards I went to go put my shoes away, and I see something on the floor, and it looks like a leaf, but then I'm confused because I'm like, I don't think there'd be leaves now, it's winter. So then I turn on the light and investigate it, and it's poop! So she had pooped somewhere in front of the door, plus... She, I don't know what the heck she did. She must have been walking while pooping or something because it's next to the rocking chair a little bit and then it's underneath the door a little bit and I'm just like, what the heck is going on here? <sighs> so yeah, I set up all these traps and this cat still finds the loophole. It's annoying. And it makes me mad too because I treat her good. I buy her special snacks all the time. I, I always have catnip for her. <laughs> I get her her favorite moist all the time. I always try to think of things that she'd like. And I know who used to be her owner before this because I ended up more or less getting stuck with the cat at the time. I mean, now I just, she's mine. I don't really count her as I'm stuck with her. But during those days at first, it was irritating because it was like I was stuck with her. I know how she was treated before. I'm not saying she was treated badly or anything, but she's definitely way spoiled with me. So when she does these rude things, it makes me mad. Because I'm like, come on, I treat you right. I do good by you. Why you gotta do stupid stuff like this? Urine on my furniture. Poop on the floor. Like, she had pooped on the... on. She's. I put one of those little um, litter mats uh, in front of her litter box. Because every time she gets out, she makes a gigantic mess. And it's just annoying having to vacuum every single day. And so she pooped on that for some reason. <laughs> But it was kind of just funny because it was stupid and I don't care. I'm like, yeah, whatever, that's your mat. You want to be dumb and poop on there instead of in your box, which is literally three inches away? Whatever. Not a big deal. But the living room floor? Like, come on. <sighs> so I don't know what to do about her. I got to figure out, figure out another trap to keep her out of the living room. I don't have a door in the living room yet, so that's the only thing I'm thinking. Maybe I can figure out some kind of door I can get. I used to have the little fence that I have that I put on the couch now. I used to set up and put it in the doorway to block her, but it used to work because I don't know what she thought. She was either too scared to jump or too dumb to realize she could jump over it or something. I don't know, but she used to not jump, so it worked perfectly. Well, more recently, she figured out, oh, that's not that high. I can jump over it, so that don't work anymore, but I, I need to ugh, just get her trapped in one room when I'm not home, the easiest room that has linoleum floors. So if she makes a stupid mess somewhere, it's simple to clean. <sighs> anyway, that's story one. Story two was, I wanted to get more of those Dollar Tree, you know, the little mini booster packs from Dollar Tree. But of course, I go and they have nothing. None. Like, I'm not even being picky just trying to look for Sword and Shield cards. They had nothing. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Like... I don't know, a, a, a weekend ago or something, I went to a Dollar Tree, I don't remember which one it was now, but they had tons, there was tons of options, they had Sword and Shield, and they had like the last three most recent of the Sun and Moon series, and and then the other day when I got those boosters I got, that was the only ones they had, that one, what was it, Unbroken Bonds um, expansion pack, and now I go, granted it's to a different Dollar Tree, but nothing, I'm like, come on, I'm still trying to do something, now I'm never going to find these dumb little booster packs. So, 
we have something else instead. These cards here, um, I ended up randomly finding these in, in a draw. <laughs> I was going through doing something else and I just stumbled across these. Kind of a thick pile and um, yeah, I must have, I'm, whenever I bought these, <laughs> I must have went through them and I meant to do something with them and clearly I forgot about them. So in a way, even though they're already opened and they're not new, they're kind of, it's kind of a new experience for me as well. Like we'll almost be seeing these for the first time because I don't remember what's in here. I don't know what's in here. I didn't look. I found them and I put them aside and figured I'd make a video about them. So that's what we got going on today. So let's see what we got. The only thing I know is um, at the end of the day, these are probably no rares or anything because if I already went through these, I would have weeded those out. I keep my rares somewhere separate. So these are probably only just regular, non-shiny, commons and uncommons. And could possibly only be characters because I also take out the trainers and all those. Trainers, energies, and whatever else because I don't, I don't care about those cards. I just want the characters. So these might just be common and uncommon characters. So let's get seeing. Alright, so first one is a Poniard. Togedamaru. Uh, Togedamaru. Somebody, uh, who was it? I think it's, um, is it Super Colin Brothers? <laughs> they sometimes do, um, Pokemon game playthroughs. And I watched them, and I, I don't know if it's them, but somebody that I've watched says that they hate Togedamaru. I forget the reason why, but. Trapinch. Boring as Trapinch, but. Um, Flygon's cool. Flabade. Apparently, this is a French French Pokemon. Araquanid. Araquanid. Yep. Hmm. Heliopdile. You know, this is kind of hard to see who these are because, as I've said before, I film using my phone. And I'm trying to get a good setup going here. Like, I got that light recently to make these a little brighter. And uh, I'm trying to be more fluid with how I talk so it's not so jagged and pausy and not fluid. <laughs> but the other thing is, for now, the setup I have that holds my phone is this clamp that's like right in the middle it covers the screen so it's hard to hard to see so sometimes that's why i'm struggling with the name because i'm trying to look over my clamp <laughs> anyways carvana now Car sharpedo is actually pretty cool in um omega ruby not bad one he's strong and two when you use him for surf you go double speed of anyone else so it's like having the mock bike it's pretty cool tepig sleeping his ball right there Onyx. Onyx is goofy because, well, this one they make him pretty strong, 100, but like, Onyx for some reason is usually weak. He's a gigantic, what's his stats? 28 feet, 10 inches, 463 pounds. He's a giant rock snake, and he's weak. I don't understand. That's actually kind of some weird stats, too. 28 feet, 10 inches long, and he's only 463 pounds? That's kind of light when you think about how long that is. What is he? Uh, in, in, in the cartoons, they make him look like he's gigantic, but what does he have? Small rocks? There's men that are, you know, like some wrestlers, like Big Show, that weigh that much. And he's, what, seven something? This guy's 2810. <laughs> Why is he only 463 pounds? Oh, something seems off there. Dusclops. Wow, this is a terrible card. He's an evolved form, and all he has is 90 HP and 20 for his attack. That is horrible. And 90 HP nowadays is pretty terrible. When when these cards first came out, that was decent because max HP was like 120. Now max HP gets crazy. It gets well over the 200s. Don't they have some like the special ones that can hit 300 HP? So 90s garbage. Look, look, see in comparison, he's also a stage two and has 110. And he's going to evolve once more, so his final stage is going to be even stronger. 60-30. The other guy only had a 20 in his one move. Whelmer. Whale Lord's pretty cool. He's not as cool as um, Sharpedo, but he's still pretty cool. I've used him. Snorunt. 
I don't really understand how this evolves into Glalie, a, a ball. How does a triangle thing turn into a ball? <laughs> Drillbur, he seems cool. Don't know much about him, I've never used him. He seems cool. Dwebble, oddly enough, even though the card's supposed to be about him, I'd say it's more, <laughs> I'd say the focal point is more this Moltres. Every time I've seen this card, that's what I look more at. He's even looking at it. It's almost like it pulls your eyes to look at the Moltres. They're really downplaying this poor Dwebble. 70 HP for like a dumb little hermit crab is not bad. Pit of. What's he hanging out with? What is that? Is that another character or is that like a fruit? No. Flap and glide. Flap seems like it should be worthless, like splash. He's just flapping his wings. How does that do 20? And glide, he's flying. How's that do 10? <laughs> Mana. Mana's are bulky looking in the game. They're only two foot, 51 and a quarter? That's not that much. I don't know. In the game, they look bulky. Me Spirit. This, I think, is. Ugh. This isn't right. First off, this is one of those legendaries of the, the, the trifecta of the emotion Pokemon. 60 HP? That's terrible! One move that does 20, and then this stupid thing, which maybe it has strategic advantage in the game, I don't know. But, and uncommon. Like, this should be, like, ultra rare, something way better than 60, and way just better. This, this is such a terrible, <laughs> all, all things considered. Wow, Krabby. Nothing wrong with Krabby, but I hate when they put Gen 1. Like, I'm over here buying, what is this now, Gen 5, and they're putting Gen 1 characters in still. Riolu. Esper, can't really talk about these two, I don't know much about them, Porygon, Porygon has three evolutions nowadays, right, Porygon, Porygon 2, and Porygon Z, unfortunately in the games, I was playing, I've been playing Omega Ruby, and I caught a Porygon, I wanted to evolve it up, but it's a pain in the butt, you gotta, each evolution needs a held item, and it needs to be traded, or something along those lines, I know it's a pain in the butt, somehow, I think it, one of them maybe is just a straight trade, and one of them is a trade with a held item or something like that. I don't know. So, I didn't even bother with Porygon. I was like, I want Porygon Z. I don't want just a boring Porygon. Like, look, Porygon sucks. 10 and... Wow, Digicharge. Cool. 50 HP. Like, why does it feel like there's two here? Darumaka. Sounds like he's a Hawaiian. Charm? Like, you want a bracelet? Kokorok. Graveler. <sighs> Graveler's like um, Machoke, how they're in all the games and they're kind of cool, but you can't ever really get that final stage unless you can trade. I've never had a Golem and I've never had a Machamp or an Alakazam because they always make you have to trade for them. Actually, I guess technically once I did have a Golem, way back you know, 15 years ago or so um maybe actually even more than that could be like 20 years ago but one of my friends we both had a pokemon game on what was the system it might have been like game boy color maybe game boy advance and um he he had a graveler and he wanted to get a golem so we traded so technically my system had golem for a minute and then i tra traded it back to him but I don't know. They kind of make these characters easier for people. Like, I don't know. It just seems... In the games, like, it just seems... What about kids that don't have friends? Or don't have... Friends with similar interests? Or don't have siblings with similar interests or something? Like, like a situation like me. <laughs> you know, I've never been able to trade unless I'm going to trade with myself. But then that requires you to have multiple systems. And both copies of the game or something, you know? Like, they kind of make it so that... Maybe trading is the easy way, but maybe there's still a, another way that you can get these end end uh, evolutions. Maybe like at that towards the end of the game, there's a character that that you can go talk to, and he'll evolve your guy for you. But if you want it sooner, you can trade whenever or something. Just just so people like me who don't have that capability to just go and trade can get them still. I don't know, it's annoying. It's probably just a marketing plan. They've done it since day one, so why are they gonna change now? Hitmontop, this isn't bad. Hitmontop evolves into Hitmonlee, right? 
Kind of for a basic. It's not even a basic. It's not uncommon, but I mean basic like up here. 90 HP, 50 damage. Oh, that's alright. Fomantis, don't know much about you. 70 HP, that's kind of not bad for something like little like you. Oh, Rulu again? Is this a double? Is it the same one? I don't remember what the other one looked like. Purloin, Cat, <laughs> New Age Meow. Wow, great move. 70, what's the point of having 70 HP if that's your move? Really? Might as well just have zero HP. Joel Tick, you too, what's the point? Oh wow, paralyzed. Oh, so maybe it maybe it can't take a turn. You have 40 HP and no can't even inflict damage. Pointless. Dratini. Cool. Especially Dragonite, but this move's terrible. Noctile. Kinda cool. I don't really use him in the games, but he's okay. Like he's kinda cool. Blindside. Does 66 damage to one of your Pokemon that doesn't opponent one that's only damage. I guess that's cool. Oh, so you could do this on a bench one too. Yeah, that's pretty cool then. Actually, how many energy did it take? Oh, it's the same. They both do the same damage, but it's the same. And last guy, Tranquil. The birds are always cool. It's funny because Pidgey's boring in the game because he's very basic. He's right in the beginning. He all over the place. He constantly running into a Pidgey. But if you stick it out, Pidgeot's awesome. Nobody has Pidgeot. <laughs> That's almost like this, uh, the Pidov line. I forget the last stage of this, but it's like, you know, it starts out like, oh, another Pidov, but then at the end of the day, you're like, oh, look what I got. If you get him all the way there. This guy's not that good, though. 80, 40, 20. I mean, this is the card. I'm sure the, the actual game would be different, but... So, yeah, how many do we have today? One, two, three, four... 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. 33, that was way too long of counting, that's boring. <laughs> well, anyway, so... Uh, we got this one in today. It's, uh, for me, this is a long video. <laughs> Hope at 17 and a half minutes now. Um, as as I'm doing this, it is a Friday. It's actually Valentine's Day, <laughs> February 14. Um, so you know what that means. A couple days we will have those doubles to do the actual <laughs> whole purpose of this channel. I've just kind of added more to fill it up and maybe make it better with some variety. Um, even though that's the whole highlight is for Sunday, obviously I'm going to try to do at least one tomorrow. I, my goal would be for two, but we'll see. Hopefully at least that one. So until then, I said see ya!